The Cincinnati Reds got better in the outfield and improved their chances of making the playoffs. I'll tell you why on today's Locked On Reds. You are Locked On Reds, your daily Cincinnati Reds podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Reds with myself, Jeff Carr. I am a lifelong Cincinnati Reds fan that has turned an addiction into information for you. This is my fifth season as uh, at least co-host of this podcast, giving you Reds content every single day all the way through the season and through the off season as well. Locked on Reds, of course, is part of the Locked On Podcast Network. We are your team every day. Thank you to all of our everydayers out there. If you hit us up in the comments section or if you let us know down at the ballpark, we thank you so much. You are the reason we do this show as we bring you daily Reds content and the Cincinnati Reds made a couple of moves yesterday on waiver day that have made this roster better. It's made this roster deeper. It's affected everything. And I think that a lot of folks were thinking, well, it needed to be pitchers for it to move the needle. Not so fast. I'll tell you why. Uh, Coming up here in just a moment, I'll also tell you how lineups will shake out, how the roster will shake out now that the Reds have two extra outfielders in tow, and the Reds have a huge, mammoth, gigantic series coming up this weekend. Four games, of course, a doubleheader today, and then two games this weekend against the Chicago Cubs that they absolutely have to win at least two games in. I'll tell you why coming up later on today's show. But first, before we jump into all of that, I want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets. Guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. The Cincinnati Reds were able to make some waiver claims, and we talked about this for the last couple of days. There were a few players that were there on the waiver wire for the Reds to go get. Now, Steve and I had both said, let's go get some pitching. Let's see what the Reds can get when it comes to maybe a starting pitcher, maybe a relief pitcher. There were those options. And the one team that we didn't say was the team that took all of them. The Cleveland Guardians decided that they were going to be super active and took all of the pitching. However, the Reds got better in the outfield and really the baseline of Harrison Bader and Hunter Renfro, they make the outfield platoon better. But both of these guys have been everyday players and it could be even better than just a stronger platoon. Let's dive into this because the Cincinnati Reds claimed Harrison Bader, who is a center fielder, and Hunter Renfro, who is a right fielder, off waivers yesterday. Renfro coming from the Angels, Harrison Bader coming from the Yankees, and this is a big-time move for this Reds team. Did they get their starting pitching that we were hoping for? No. But the outfield has badly needed help. TJ Hopkins has got a lot of playing time out in the outfield. Nick Martini, for the awesomeness that he has had of a couple of at-bats and a couple of games and things like that, was not supposed to be a guy that was getting a lot of at-bats in this outfield, and he has recently because the Reds are trying to find anything to replace Jake Fraley. They're trying to find anything in the lineup. I mean, as, as Spencer Steers had to move to the infield, they're trying to shuffle the outfield and see what they can find. They just haven't found it yet. But with the two guys that they got, the outfield got a lot better. My favorite of the two is Harrison Bader. Harrison Bader is um, a very, very good get. The kind of guy that, I mean, if if the Reds had traded for him at the deadline, we would have been excited about. And, And you're going to see the 240 batting average and stop right there and say, oh my gosh, that's not that good. Why are we excited about him? Stop. Don't do that. Look deeper. Gold Glove Award winner, 2021, for center field. We always talk about center field being one of the hardest positions in baseball to defend. He got the Gold Glove for it two years ago. And this season, he is ninth with eight outs above average. He is ninth among all outfielders in Major League Baseball 
in that stat and in, in outs above average according to baseball savant for reference tj friedel has four outs above average we we believe that tj friedel is our best outfield defender here in cincinnati harrison bader's twice as good as he is defensively that's huge that, that, that it's been a and, and defense is kind of more of an eye test thing than it is a numbers thing. But we know with our eyes that the Reds defense has not been that great in the outfield. In fact, outs above average, this stat that I used for Harrison Bader, says that the Reds outfield has been third worst in all of baseball. All year. It needed help. And Harrison Bader's here to help. But with the bat, there's a couple of things to consider. Because sure, he's hitting 240 right now. His um, OPS plus isn't very good overall, but he crushes left-handed pitching. This season against lefties, he has a batting average of 343. Mm. Gets on base 39% of the time. Mm -hmm. And he has a slugging percentage of 687. Yeah, baby, let's go. That is a slash line that I can get behind. Plus, for his career, he has an 841 OPS against lefties. Dude absolutely mashes lefties. So, you get a good glove, you get a good bat against left-handed pitching. Harrison Bader is a good get. Plus, let's add this in. This is a little bit more circumstantial, but it, it, it plays. At Great American Ballpark, in his career, Harrison Bader has played 30 career games. He has a slash line of a 294 average, a 385 slugging, and a 544 slug. Or I'm sorry, a 385 on base percentage and a 544 slugging. I, I I really hope that we get some semblance of that for the final month of this season because the Reds get him for what remains on his contract, which is a little over a million dollars. It's nothing crazy, and he now slots in to this outfield. The Reds also get Hunter Renfro. I was really excited about Harrison Bader, but Hunter Renfro is also a very good get. Now, defensively, not good. Um, in fact, he's the opposite of Harrison Bader because Harrison Bader has eight outs above average. Hunter Renfro has negative eight outs above average. So what is likely to happen with Hunter Renfro is he is the right-handed platoon at DH with Jake Fraley because Jake Fraley is going to return on Friday and be the left-handed DH. Uh, they've said that, you know, he, he's playing on a, it's a fractured toe. It's the fourth toe on his left foot. Initially, I thought it was like his big toe, but it's like the fourth toe. And if you really think about it, I mean, unless that thing is hurt, you don't feel your fourth toe on your left foot. But his, of course, is fractured, so I'm sure he's feeling it. However, he is going to play through it. He's played a couple of games in Louisville. He's felt good. He's ready to go. And David Bell has said that he will DH at least to start. I'm guessing he's probably going to DH the rest of the year. But Hunter Renfro is a great get off the waiver wire because he can slot in as the right-handed platoon for the DH spot. Again, don't just look at his batting average this year. It's 242. You're going to be like, eh. Look at his power. 19 home runs. And that kind of power is just going to play up at Great American Ballpark. In fact... We can even add him, and the reason I'm saying, you know, platoon against left-handed pitching, he's a right-handed hitter. His career OPS against left-handed pitching is 841 for his entire career. And for his entire career, he slugs 529. Slugs over 500 against left-handed pitching whole career. This was a good get. Both these guys, in, in, in short, did we want Lucas Giolito? Yeah. Did we want one of the relief pitchers? I really wanted Matt Moore, but did you also want Reynaldo Lopez? Sure. But the Cleveland Guardians getting them means the Miami Marlins didn't get them. And reports were the Marlins had placed claims on all those pitchers. So they would have gotten them anyway. It's a good thing they went to Cleveland. The Reds do play Cleveland for two games, but come on, this is a much more this is a much more beneficial thing that they went to Cleveland than if they went to Miami. The point being, the Reds were not going to have an opportunity to get those pitching. They got some outfield help that they badly needed, and these guys are way better options. I I know, I know, I know, I know. I know we've all fallen in love with Stuart Fairchild. He's not that good. I'm just going to say it right now. Just, 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 just take a breath. 
and think about it. Look at his numbers. Look at his stats. Stuart Fairchild's not that good. TJ Hopkins, not that good. Maybe he turns into something, but he's not really slated to be something. Hunter Renfro and Harrison Bader bring playoff experience to this Reds team. In fact, Hunter Renfro has been to the World Series with the Tampa Bay Rays in 2020. Harrison Bader has been to both the NLCS and the ALCS. This team needs that experience. This was a huge move by Nick Kroll and by the Cincinnati Reds. And hey, you know, it's the luck of the draw with the waiver order and things like that. But good luck falls the Reds way because the Reds just got better. So how does this impact the roster and how's this impact the lineup with the two new guys in tow? We'll dive into that coming up next. Before we do, though, I want to tell you about one of today's sponsors, and that is FanDuel. You can get ready for the NFL season with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Literally, bet $5, boom, $200 in bonus bets. That's it. There's no other catch. Just bet $5 if you're a new customer. Plus, all customers who bet $5 get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket on YouTube and YouTube TV. Yeah. Go bet $5 right now. You'll get $100 off the uh, the NFL Sunday ticket there on YouTube and YouTube TV. You can watch every game. You can watch the Bengals. You can watch everybody on NFL Sunday ticket. And because now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use, and you can uh, place a bet on everything from spreads to player props and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with an offer that you won't want to miss. Again, all you have to do as a new customer is bet $5 and you'll get $200 in guaranteed bonus bets. That is an amazing thing. There's all kinds of great futures. You can check out the bank. Obviously, the Bengals are favored to win the AFC North. Obviously. They're uh, one of the top teams to win the AFC. One of the top teams to win the Super Bowl. Go check them out today over at FanDuel. FanDuel is an official partner of the NFL. Remember that you can catch every pitch of the Reds' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. If you can't be down at the ballpark, just download that SXM app and search the word Reds. And thanks, as always, for making Lockdown Reds your first listen every day. Thank you, everybody who's joining in. If you are not subscribed, if you don't follow this podcast on your favorite podcasting platform, please do so. Or subscribe right here on YouTube and hit that bell to get notified whenever we've got new content for you here. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, you see I've got a very nice shirt on, very uh, comfortable shirt on, about to uh, take a week off. Now, Steve is going to be with you. He returns on Monday. He's going to have a great week full of uh, some interesting guests and his own analysis for what's going on with the Reds. He's going to have you covered on this Cubs series. Uh, but I will be off for the week, so I'm in that vacation mood. But I'm happy because with this claim, with, with what the Reds did on Thursday, getting Hunter Renfro, getting Harrison Bader, both of them are eligible for the playoff roster because they're on the team before September 1st, uh, this is massive. But how does it affect everything? Because we've already seen the uh, 40-man roster moves. They uh, DFA'd Alejo Lopez, and they DFA'd Michael Ciani. No big surprise there. So you're probably going to see uh, one of the two will be that extra move because as September 1st happens, today being September 1st, the rosters expand from 26 to 28. However, that's one pitcher and one position player. That's not just expanding. Plus, you're getting Jake Fraley back. So you will need to see a couple of guys. Uh, I think Alejo Lopez was on the major league roster, so he has been sent down. I think you'll probably see TJ Hopkins sent down as well because I think Michael Ciani was already in AAA. But um, with those moves, then you wonder what the lineup looks like because – both of these players have been everyday players for their career. But when you look at both Harrison Bader and Hunter Renfro, I think Harrison Bader can be an everyday player for this team. Hunter Renfro's, like I said, he's going to be the left-handed platoon. If he's going to be in the outfield, it's going to be the left-handed platoon with Will Benson. 
if he's he's probably likely to DH more because of the defensive liability. So he is going to probably be the left-handed side of that DH. And just kind of looking ahead to this series with the Cubbies, uh, I think we, be, I, I believe we see Justin Steele coming up this weekend, which means that the Reds will need their left-handed lineup. And with the left-handed lineup in tow, this is kind of how I'm looking at this. And I believe, let's see here. Oh, I apologize on that. They will not see Justin Steele. But just in the interest of looking at what happens whenever a lefty is starting on the mound against the Cincinnati Reds, this is what we're looking at. Harrison Bader is going to lead off. David Bell's been doing this thing here recently against left-handed pitching. He's kind of had a rotating leadoff man. But when it comes to lefty pitching, Harrison Bader mashes. And he gets on base at a very high clip, so I expect him to lead off. Then you're going to have, and he's going to be playing center field. I think that with Harrison Bader here, you're going to move TJ Friedel over into right field. Because, and, and, and maybe it's left field, but it's one of the corner outfield spots. Harrison Bader is a much better fielder than TJ Friedel is. But Harrison Bader in center field leading off against lefties. Then you got Spencer Steer uh, batting second and playing second. Ellie playing short and batting third, then Hunter Renfro is going to bat fourth. Hunter Renfro has got the kind of power that can really help in a pinch. And I know that people are like quoting his, his, his prowess with runners and scoring position and things like that with the angels, especially in what he's done so far this year. As much as I want to believe that that is an evaluation thing, that's also very circumstantial. Like think about it. First of all, guy's going to be at the plate with runners in scoring position. If he doesn't, if he comes up and there aren't runners in scoring position, that's not an indictment on him. And then if there are guys in scoring position, how often is that happening? How, you know, how many opportunities is he getting? There's a little bit of circumstantialness when it comes to quoting a dude's average with runners in scoring position. So I think you put the power and the experience and the consistency that Hunter Renfro brings in that fourth spot. Then you have CES playing first and batting fifth. Noel V. Marte at third and batting sixth. Nixon Zell against lefties playing in left field, batting seventh. Tyler Stevenson, a catcher, batting eighth. And then TJ Friedel. And, and again, Senzel could play right. TJ Friedel could play right. Whatever. You know, you switch those guys around. But TJ Friedel would then bat ninth and play in right field. And I, I, I really think that against lefties, you'll see Harrison Bader in this lineup because the Reds got him for his defense. They got him, and, and, and he's hit homers at Great American Ballpark. He's hit well at Great American Ballpark, and he hits well against lefties. But even against righties, like I think you can slot him in at the end of the lineup and feel good about it because of what he brings defensively. This Reds outfield has just been, let's call it what it is. It's been abysmal defensively. It's not very consistent. There, there's been some plays here and there. You've seen some diving stops. You've seen some, some nice uh, plays. But can you remember the last time that there was a throwout? Like, they've, they've done a good job of understanding their own limitations and hitting the cutoff man and relying on the cutoff man to make some plays. Harrison Bader has a nice arm. Harrison Bader can get some dudes out if they're trying to tag up and things like that. I really think Harrison Bader needs to play every day for his defensive ability because this team has badly needed a defensive upgrade really for a long time. And, and I think that as we move forward, the infield defense is going to improve because you're going to have, uh, you know, guys that are currently rookies just continue to get more experience and get better at their positions. But in the outfield, it kind of felt like as awesome as Will Benson is, they're just not playing him in center field. And TJ Friedel covers a lot of ground. He has good range and a good glove, but he does not have a good arm. TJ Friedel's arm is meant to get the ball to the cutoff man, and then the cutoff man makes the next throw. Harrison Bader can be a guy that makes that throw. He can be a guy that if somebody's tagging up on third, then you kind of be like, hmm, 
maybe there's something there, depending on how deep in the outfield he gets. But I think that Harrison Bader needs to play every day. Now, and, and, and this is the lineup without Jonathan India, because when Jonathan India comes back, then you're talking about Spencer Steer in left field, and you don't need Nick Senzel in the lineup anymore. Think about this, too, and this is something uh, real fast, like thinking about the roster and the lineup and all this other stuff. The Reds are where they are in the playoff race, and they haven't had Jonathan India in almost 30 games. And by the time he comes back, it's going to be a little bit over 30 games because he's not ready to come back today. They've had uh, Jake Fraley on the injured list for, I think it was 24 games, 25 games, something like that. Matt McClain now on the injured list for a little over a week. And, I mean, I don't know. Like, unless we get some good news, I haven't heard an update yet, but unless we get some good news on the oblique strain, we might not see him back the rest of the year, or at least the rest of the regular season. So, with all of that being said, Bader and Renfro really help stabilize the rest of this roster so that you don't have to have outfielders come up and play that don't, um, how do I say this diplomatically, deserve to be in the lineup every day. I'm sorry, but TJ Hopkins figuring out if he has a spot in this lineup, that was a thing that should have happened last year. And, you know, I don't know if he was ready last year, but this is not, we are not at the point right now to be figuring out who can play. We know who can play, and we need to fill spots in order to make the playoffs that's what the Reds did here with the waiver wire. And I love what they've done because they just got better against lefties. They got better overall. And they got better depth. You know, these moves couldn't have come at a better time as the Reds have a four game series that they need to win at least two from the Cubbies this weekend. We'll preview that matchup coming up next. Before we get into that, I wanted to remind you that if you can't be down at the ballpark, you can catch every pitch of the Reds' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search the word Reds. Thanks, as always, for uh, joining us here. If, if you want to continue the conversation about your Cincinnati Reds in between episodes, you can join our Locked on, Red Discord, uh, Locked on Reds Discord page. We have a link down in the description. A lot of great people talking Reds baseball all day long there on discord. Plus you can join me on subtext by, um, uh, there's a link down in the description as well. We've got a lot of great stuff. We do, uh, discussions. We, uh, text about the game, things like that. Also do, uh, Q and A's and stuff, um, on a, a, a semi-regular basis. I'm still, I, I will admit, I'm still figuring out what I want to do with subtext, but the best thing about that is you have a direct line to me. We can talk some baseball and it's a great thing. You get a free trial for 14 days and decide if you like it and all that great stuff. So uh, check out subtext and also check out the Lockdown Reds Still Score page today. You know, it's a good thing that the Reds got better because <laughs> they need to win at least two games this weekend. And I say at least two. Now, if they go one and three, they're not out of it because there's three wild card spots. The Reds just need to get into one of them. But you really won't feel that great about a Reds team that goes one and three against the Cubs because their last series against the Cubs, they went one and three. And looking at that series, it's very interesting to me because, you know, here recently the Reds have struggled to score runs. In that series, at the beginning of August against the Cubs, they did not score. Or, I mean, they, I'm sorry, they did not struggle to score. They did a pretty good job. They scored 23 runs in four games, which normally – when you average just about six runs a game, probably figure you win that series. But you remember this was the series where they lost one game 20 to nine. They lost another game 16 to six. So sure, scoring runs is good because here recently they haven't scored a whole bunch, but preventing the Cubs from scoring runs will be even better. And the good news is the Reds have the right guys on the mound. They have Graham Ashcraft, at least in game one here today. Uh, game two is TBD versus TBD, probably Lion Richardson. Then on Saturday, you've got Andrew Abbott, who in his most recent outing didn't pitch that many innings, didn't throw. I mean, he threw, 
I mean, it was about 90 pitches, but still, I think that he can probably go a little bit harder in this game, especially if his command is a little bit better. And then you have Brandon Williamson on Sunday. So you have some decent options here. Game two of this doubleheader here on Friday is going to be very interesting to see how it plays out because neither team really has their starters figured out. And I think that the Reds were low key hoping that they would get one of those, uh, that they would get Luke, Lucas Giolito from the waiver wire. But since they didn't, um, I think we're probably looking at another Lion Richardson start, which his last start was okay. You know, when you don't give up back to back home runs on your first two pitches of the game, you have a much better start. But in the first game, th- this is an intriguing matchup because Graham Ashcraft has been Mr. Reliable here recently, right? I mean, he's pitched pretty well. He's going up against Jordan Wicks, the 2021 first round draft pick for the Cubs, who just made his major league debut in his last outing. His last outing, he pitched five innings. He looked fantastic, looked like he was unhittable. So I'm wondering what the Reds do with this, because obviously that's the only tape that's out there. Talking about a dude that doesn't have a whole lot of minor league tape on him. He's kind of, and he's a right-handed pitcher, I believe. I need to verify that real quick. But, I mean, he's he's kind of along the same lines as, oh, I'm sorry, he is a left-handed pitcher. So he's right there with Kyle Harrison. You remember Kyle Harrison absolutely dominated the Reds lineup. So hopefully adding Harrison Bader and Hunter Renfro can help out with this. I expect both of those guys to start in game one. But Jordan Wicks um, is the Cubs' fourth-rate prospect. And this is looking at Fangraphs, by the way. Fangraphs has uh, Jordan Wicks as the fourth-ranked Cubs prospect. They also have him as their 55th-ranked prospect overall. So, you know, Fangraphs' top 100, Jordan Wicks is 55. He has six pitches that he showed in his debut. Now, his curveball and his slider basically were waste pitches. They were they were bouncing all over the place. They weren't necessarily the pitches you worry about. He showed a forcing fastball, a sinking fastball, and a cut fastball. But his main pitch, and this is where I'm going to see like a left-handed version of Luis Castillo a little bit, is his changeup. His changeup is his bread and butter. That's where he's going to get his swings and misses. That's where he dominated in his first outing, and he's going to use his fastballs to set up his changeup because largely his changeup was not in the strike zone. It was just below it. He was able to kind of drop it underneath where you figure the bat and the swing plane is going to be for right-handers or left-handers. I find this interesting, and I I kind of circled this. I think it's going to be a tough test for Ellie De La Cruz. Ellie's going to have to be all over this dude's fastball because I don't think – I think he's going to have a tough time with – Jordan Wicks change up, but uh, Jordan Wicks is not a guy that walks a lot of people all through his minor league career. He's done a very good job of limiting walks and his first start. He, he did a good job of limiting walks. Like he's going to throw strikes. And we saw that with Kyle Harrison with the giants, Kyle Harrison was filling up the strike zone and the reds were trying to be patient. They were trying to work counts. They were trying to push the envelope a little bit with him, And it just wasn't working because he just was throwing strikes the whole time. So they were going 0-2 before they blinked an eye, before they got the bat off their shoulder. They're probably going to have to be aggressive against Jordan Wicks and not expect, even though this is only his second start in the major leagues, I'm guessing he's probably going to come out with the same stuff. I'm, I'm guessing that the Cubs are not going to try and tweak his game very much because he was pretty successful for his first five innings. So it'll be interesting to see how the lineup bounces back from that. But again, on the whole, the Reds need to win two games this weekend minimum. And really, I mean, we're going to feel pretty good about ourselves as Reds fans if the Reds take three out of four from the Cubs this weekend. I just, I feel like more often than not, four game series end up in splits. And I think that's probably what we're looking at. That's what we need from this Reds team. And really, in order to do that, they are going to have to just bump up the pitching. We're going to have to get good pitching from Graham Ashcraft. We're going to have to get good pitching from whoever ends up starting game two on Friday. Good pitching from Andrew Abbott. Really would like to see Abbott go five innings. 
I'm not going to ask for six. I think at this point in the season, Andrew Abbott just, he has thrown too much. This is the most amount of innings he's ever thrown at the highest level that he's ever thrown with the most stress that he's ever thrown. So for people that are trying to say the fatigue is not a factor with Andrew Abbott, get out of here with that. It is. And I think that when it comes to this start, if he can get five innings and only ask the bullpen to get 12 outs, that'd be a big, a big win for this team. And then you see Brandon Williamson on Sunday. He needs to pitch. Well. Pitching needs to be on point. The Reds improve their outfield defense. So hopefully that's on point. And hopefully the infield continues to improve because this is a big, big series. Reds need this series. They've got a lot of, you know, we said this in 2021 where it's just like September looks like they're playing some teams that they could beat, maybe. So I'm not going to say that now. But opportunity abounds. So if you can win against this Cubs team, you set yourself up for a very, very nice month. September baseball is here. September playoff push baseball for your Cincinnati Reds is here. <sighs> Have fun. This is gonna be this is gonna be nerve wracking. We are gonna want to pull our hair out. And if the Reds lose, we're all going to talk about how much we think the playoffs are just out of reach, totally, completely kaput. But think about this: the Reds just went five and five on a West Coast road trip, and they're one game out of the wild card. Just one. All you need is a good series. Let's see what happens. Before we get out of here, don't forget that you can catch every pitch of the Reds' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search the word Reds. But that'll wrap up this edition of Locked On Reds. Thank you so much for making Locked On Reds your first listen every day. Really appreciate getting the chance to talk some Reds with you guys. Uh, make sure uh, that you check out coming up on Monday as Steve will have you covered for this series. I will be out next week, but Steve will be all over the Reds every single day. So make sure that you're following along every day because we are locked on Reds every single day.